Welcome to Transform Teaching and Learning with Dingley EDU. My name is Susan Oxnavad and I'll be your host for this webinar. I'd like to start with a brief introduction to myself while I flash my contact information up on the screen. So I am the ThingLink Education Community Manager as well as a full-time instructional tech and data coach in a small school outside of Chicago. I've been blogging as a way to share efficient and effective ways to leverage the power of technology on my own blog, Cool Tools for 21st Century Learning, for quite some time. And it is there that my relationship with ThingLink began. When I first discovered ThingLink for myself back in 2011, I fell in love with it right away. I've had a lot of fun collaborating with everyone at ThingLink and watching the tool get better and better and grow into this amazing educational platform. And for the past few years, I've even been blogging on the ThingLink blog. And so as we explore the topic for tonight, which is building the ultimate word wall, I just want you to sit back and relax because all the resources are available on both the ThingLink blog and my own blog, Cool Tools for 21st Century Learners. Now a little bit about this session and all of the sessions that I hold through webinars about ThingLink. Um, this is all about helping students construct knowledge as they create. And so I'd like to talk about how to integrate ThingLink into your curriculum. It, it shouldn't be at the end of a unit of study. This should be the starting point for where students are beginning their learning. Um, and ThingLink is, is equipped for the task. When I suggest teachers and students create ThingLinks, I like them to focus on uncovering knowledge because you can use research, you can drive a lesson or a learning activity with an essential question, and then you can give students the opportunities to create and share their learning. And you'll see that tonight as we explore ways to build a, a thing like for vocabulary and add it to the ultimate word wall. As we explore the examples in the ultimate word wall, I'd like you to keep in mind um, that this is a method, uh, an alternative method to the traditional sharing methods as well. Students are going to create a thing link and then they're going to post it themselves on this ultimate word wall. And so sharing can be different than having one student at a time explain their work. Sharing can take some different uh, and non-traditional forms that can help you maximize instructional time and uh, extend it a little bit into the 24-7 classroom. And these ways of sharing also make sure that students are active instead of passive learners. So I'm really excited about putting all of this together and sharing this with you this evening. Now before we begin with the vocabulary activities, I want to take a minute to um, explain a little bit about what ThingLink is for those of you who are new and just to give everybody an overview about the powerful possibilities of ThingLink. ThingLink is a powerful and flexible tool for teaching and learning and it's useful across all content areas because every ThingLink starts with an image, and the image can be anything you wish it to be. So, on top of your base image, you're going to add tags with content. And here you see an example of some tags. So when I scroll over the tags, they'll either take me someplace, this could just be a link, as it is in this case, or they can be rich media tags. And rich media tags are really amazing, and we have over 50 rich media tags. And those allow you to embed content from these third-party tools right onto a thing link. So it's right there and students don't have to leave the page uh, to get the information. So here are some examples of some of those rich media tags that are really great for use with education. So first of all, you can embed video. You can see all the video platforms listed above. And here's just a YouTube video. And you can see that it pops right out on the page and you can play it right there and you can also pause. So that happens to be a tutorial on how to use ThingLink if you've never used it before. So that's a really useful video and teachers can power their instruction with tutorials or with educational videos from any of these services. And you can also add audio. So here is an example of audio and I'm going to take out my mic for a minute so you can hear it and then I'll pop it back in. So as you can see, audio can really enhance any image for education. And of course, that was, uh, you, that was a SoundCloud clip. 
you just copy and paste the link into the tag, which I'll be demonstrating in a few minutes. But you can also have students uh, record voices and speeches, lectures, interviews, all kinds of things you can do with audio. Students can tell stories right into the mic. Now also with ThingLink, you can add an image on top of an image. So any tag can have an image to, to more clearly illustrate the concept and idea. And of course you can write down below, and so I like to have students write um, quick annotations of what the tag is supposed to represent and what the image is supposed to represent. And I'll also be demonstrating that in a minute. Now also, um, ThingLink is connected to some social media sites, so it integrates really nicely in your Facebook page. That's really great for teachers who want to share. We have a big education community. Of course, I'm the community manager, and everyone is creating great ThingLinks, and there's no reason we shouldn't share those. The best and fastest way to share those is through social media. You can also put a Twitter tag on your ThingLinks, and you can help your classroom connect with other classrooms that are, that are also using Twitter as well. So it's a great way to get uh, new ideas and to share what you're learning. It's also connected to some e-commerce sites. And here's an example of um, Amazon.com. And then we've got some utilities. And this is one of my favorite categories because you can see all of these Google tools, including the Google Docs and the Google Maps are in here, Poll Daddy's in here. So here's an example of a Google form that is embedded. This is a live Google form. And this is actually uh, about vocabulary so it fits appropriately. This is vocabulary. It's an activity to pre-assess students vocabulary before they actually do a thing link activity. So I've made this Google form and I just put a little grid in here and students have to tell me what they know about each of these terms before they do the lesson. And then of course I would embed a post assessment afterwards and I'd hope to see some of these students had increased their knowledge after doing my lesson. But with this thing link uh, form, you just push submit, and now the teacher will get the results in a spreadsheet in her own list of Google Docs. So lots and lots of great ways to use these rich media tags, and I will be demonstrating that. Um, you might notice here that all of the tags start with an icon, and the icons are what symbolize symbolizes the content under the tag. So it sort of adds another layer of learning. And we have um, some EDU premium icons that are available for education. And as you can see, these are really great. So if you want to show students that, they're, um, that there's a video under a tag, you can use the video tag. You can use any of these educational tags. You can also, with our premium account, create your own custom icons. And I like to do that a lot because I really like to pinpoint what that content is. And I think it just adds a great layer of learning. So here's an example of the first thing link that I ever created, but I've remade it many, many, many times. And I created some custom icons here, as you can see, just to show students, um, to guide the learning and to show students uh, what resources, what the resources are below the icon. So here you can see I used the tags that have numbers too to guide the learning so students knew where to start. And I have just some different examples of some content. So here's a video, and this is really great because students can watch a video of the first rocket launch. So that really helps them build uh, background knowledge, and so that's a useful, very useful way to use a video. Um, and then here I had some audio, and what's better than actually listening to the NASA sound gallery, uh, the eagle has landed. And so you'll notice I also put some attribution here. I think that's important to show students di digital citizenship, and it's very, very easy to do. So when students click on this link, they can go to the actual page and see that it comes from the Library of Congress, or, or it comes from NASA, I'm sorry. Um, okay, and so I also like to do this. Now these are some primitive earlier tags that I made to help provide students with leveled content, leveled reading content, because I want everybody when they're learning, when they're exploring this image, to read something. But of course, the reading levels in any classroom or in uh, across the grade levels that were using this activity were very varied. So what I did is I, I made tags easy, middle, and advanced. Since then, I've changed those to more common terms. I think I have um, proficient and approaching proficient, but it's all the same. So you can see here's just a little example of one. So if you click on this easy one about Buzz Aldrin, you could come to this Wikipedia Simple English article. And of course, when students get there, they would leave the page, but they can use a, a screen reader or a text-to-speech to, -speech to um, 
listen to this if they can't read it as well. And it goes all the way up to advanced articles for some of the students who can handle more rich uh, text. So that's just a great, a lot of great things you can do with text on a thing link. But I like it because the playing field is leveled here and all students have the same resource, whether or not they're proficient readers or struggling readers. And so they can self-select the resources that work for them and everybody can learn and everybody can, um, especially if you combine it with some of these other media resources. And here's just an example of just a, a link that would take us out to a hands-on game. So again, students learn through uh, simulations, and so this is just another way to provide resources. The idea with the premium icons here is it really shows everybody, uh, really helps students self-select, and so they can meet their unique learning styles. So here's an example of how you can keep an in image growing and how ThingLink can grow with you as a learner and as a designer of resources. This is my first ThingLink and you might notice that part of it was on the one that I just showed you. I first made this one and it was back in 2011 when we only had one little black circle as an icon. And you can see that I embedded a video here, or, or I put a video in here, but it was an embedded video. I'm not sure if I didn't know how to do that or if that feature was not available yet. But anyway, when it was time to update this image, the only thing I needed to do was click on this Replace Image button that's at the bottom of every thing link in our premium account. That's a premium feature. When you replace when you click this button, you're prompted to replace that background image, and it keeps all of the tags intact. So here's the original one, and then here's the updated resource, and you can see the original image is part of my collage, but this one is just rich, is just filled with many more rich media tags. And uh, when I replace the image, the original tags stayed intact, and then you can just click on edit, and you can add more tags, or you can drag them around to where they need to go. So that's how you can create a, an image that's going to last, and it's going to grow with you as you grow as a teacher and also as a designer of resources. Okay, ThingLink's also cross-platform, so that's really helpful. You can use whatever device is handy at the moment and everything will sync up. So you can use a computer, a laptop, desktop, you can use the web browser on a tablet, an iPad or an Android tablet, and it even works uh, on the web browser in your phone. So it's really great. You can start work in one place and then move to another place and everything syncs up but what's really great is we also have an app and this app is available for free and it works with android and ios what's great about it is um you can it works really well on on a tablet if you're in an ipad school but also you can use it without wireless so you can go out into the world into the garden or the yard or on a field trip and you can create a thing like you can take pictures, you can add pictures on top of pictures, you can add text, and then when you return to wireless, you can annotate it even more by using the resources that are available on the World Wide Web and digging deeper into the learning. So maybe you're taking pictures of flowers in the backyard and then you can do some research and find out more about those flowers later. Everything syncs up. So it also helps level the playing field for students who don't have wireless at home. In my particular school district, our students have one-to-one -one iPads and they take them home, but not everybody has wireless. So here, a student can prepare for that and they can do, they can do their project at home, and then they can again return to school, connect to wireless, and annotate it. So the ThingLink app is really something I strongly suggest you get on your devices as quickly as possible. And it also works on your phone, so that's just nice for capturing learning on the go. And then you can share across the web. I talked about this a little earlier when I showed you the rich media tags that are available to put right on your ThingLink image. And you can also, as you can see, you just click the share button and you can connect to all of these uh, social media sites and you can grab the link and share it, or you can also embed ThingLink in just about any tool that supports embedding. So it's a great way. Then you can have a ThingLink on your website, your teacher space, and anybody can use it and anybody can actually modify it as well. And finally, I just wanna mention again that ThingLink is fully integrated with Google Drive. So that's all you have to do is create a Google Doc, publish it, and pop the link into a tag and you can add 
a spreadsheet, you can you know publish results of a spreadsheet, you can embed a form, you can put a slides presentation, or you can put a Google Doc. And it's really great because then when you update the Google Doc, your ThingLink automatically stays updated. So those are some of the features of ThingLink. And now we're going to jump on over to the ultimate word wall, but I should tell you at the end of the word wall demonstrations, then I'll explain the differences between the uh, ThingLink classroom and district. So you'll get a little bit more of ThingLink and you'll be able to understand how you can manage a classroom. First, let me show you some of the things, some of the reasons why you'll want to take that on. And I think the ultimate word wall is a really great example of how ThingLink can be so useful across all grade levels and content areas. Now, this ultimate word wall was um, an attempt just to show a really great way, uh, great, great way to support uh, the academic shift, the Common Core Academic Shift Number Six, which is all about vocabulary, and it talks about um, vocal that vocabulary knowledge is the single best predictor of student academic achievement across all curriculum areas, and we know how important vocabulary is. And the Common Core has us digging a little deeper and. Uh, breaking down the vocabulary into three tiers, basic vocabulary, sophisticated high frequency vocabulary, and then low frequency content specific vocabulary words. Now these are the types of words, these level tier three words are the types of words that you see in bold print in a textbook. They work really well for this, um, this basic introduction to ThingLink where you can create a, a vocabulary activity as an example. You can have students create vocabulary activities and you can really dig a little deeper into the vocabulary. So that's why this started, but this was actually launched um, during the ThingLink Teacher Challenge of 2014. So this is something that uh, I've hosted, uh, hosted and facilitated for the last couple of years. I expect it to continue. Uh, teachers can join the ThingLink Teacher Challenge over the summer when you have a little time, and every week I give a challenge and a rationale for why this is a great teaching method and strategy and then teachers submit their work. And so the ultimate word wall grew out of that. And the idea was to focus on this vocabulary and then I asked all teachers to create these examples and post them on a Padlet wall. So they did all the work and we have all of these examples. Now since then I've used it in multiple trainings and I actually used it in the ThingLink Teacher Challenge the next year. So there are all kinds of examples. This wall just keeps growing and growing and growing. So it's a great topic for a webinar and I'm really excited to share it with you. Um, <clears throat> but the whole idea behind using ThingLink to dig deeper into vocabulary is because when students just look up words in a dictionary, they're really not putting them into their uh, knowledge base. They're looking them up. And so this is a non-traditional way of learning vocabulary that helps them interact with the new vocabulary. They're going to build an idea based on a vocabulary word, and they're going to expand it and annotate it with video, audio, and all of these wonderful media tags and then they're going to really learn that and they can benefit from each other's. Also building a thing like vocabulary activity is just a lot of fun and of course it's based on the traditional word wall that hangs in our classes and I know I still see some of those in those classes. I always had a hard time maintaining those because the tape doesn't hold and you have to put them on the wall and then you have to be in the room to see the word wall. There is some advantage to that but also this type of a word wall is available 24 7 so it's just a different kind of a word wall. I don't know that it's in place of the traditional one but it's certainly different and worth doing. Now I'm going to start out slowly with this example from Bud Not Buddy. This is a very simple basic example. I'm going to show you how you can add some tags yourself to explore this image. So I'm going to pop out of my channel right now and go on over to the editing mode in ThingLink. And so here we are on the ThingLink site. Now I can view this in full screen, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to stay in my dashboard so that you can access, uh, see me access all of these tools. So here's my Bud Not Buddy that I created, and I just created this for a quick activity today. So it's not, you know, something that I took a very long time on. Perfect example for a, a demo, though. So if we explore this right now, you can see how I set this up. I found some vocabulary words, and I put them on these tags. And there's a little more um, 
comprehensive one. So I wanted students to learn these vocabulary words, and that's a really great way to start out a thing like activity here. Now, if you see here, this is my work in progress, and I just put this Google Doc on here for myself and for my demo right now. This is chapter 14, and this is my Google Doc. It's the work behind the thing link. And these are the words that I want to add. And then I also want to add a book trailer and a video and an image. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you right now. But this is my work in progress. When I'm done with this thing link, when I give it to students, if they don't need this anymore, I can just quickly delete that tag. So let me show you how to go ahead and edit. So first of all, oh, I should start by saying every thing link starts with an image. So before I get to ThingLink, I had to find this background image. It was very easy to do and upload it to ThingLink. Real easy, just navigate and find it and upload it to ThingLink. So now I'm at the point where I can add the tags. So I'm going to go into editing mode right on the corner of the screen. And you can see here are the text tags I added. Now when I click on that, you'll see that the tag editor pops up on the side of the screen. So this is where you need to focus your attention now. This is just the simplest tag I can possibly add. I just put the word here and then I changed the icon. And so I want students to use those to launch the learning. So that's how I just uh, put the text tag on. Now let me just show you a little more. I'm going to save that. I want to add a book trailer. So I'll sh this is how you make a tag. So I'm going to put it down here. It doesn't really matter. I can move it later. So I just tap on the screen, and you see the tag editor shows up. Now I have that uh, thumb, the thumbtack because that's the last icon I used. But I can choose from any of my icons over here in the tag editor. That's all I do is I click, and I can choose them. You can see all of my custom icons, and I have a lot. I really like to create these, but then we're going to get down into the ThingLink icons, and I'm going to use the ThingLink icon for this because we have a great video camera. So this will symbolize to my students that this is a video. Now the only, the next step is I just have to copy and paste the link from the YouTube video into this box right here. So I have a cheat sheet right now, and that's that Google Doc that you see displayed here. Okay, so this has all of everything that I need that I wanted to pop in there. So you can see I already picked the video, the book trailer. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm just going to paste it in here in the tag that I just created. And I lost my icon because you can't have a blank icon on the page. So I'm going to go back one more time and get the video camera, which is right here. Okay, so I copied and pasted the link from the YouTube in there, and here it is, about to begin. What's really nice is there was an ad at the beginning, but I can start it at six seconds and lose the ad, which is very nice as well. Now, when students are creating these images, I really want them to add some text. I want them, I want them to watch the video that they've chosen to put up here, and then I want them to write a clear and concise summary of what the video was about down below. That, of course, serves as an assessment because you can see what students have learned. I found that if you don't have students annotate underneath, they'll find a cool movie, but they might not even watch it. So please make sure you add that part. Okay, so here is uh, just a quick little annotation that I copied and pasted in here. I would want students to tell a little more, but I wanted to demonstrate uh, at least the very basics of putting the text in. Now, you can also see that I have um, some some attribution here. And again, I mentioned that earlier. I think it's really important to include the attribution. It's so easy to do, and this is a great way to help students be digit, good, good and responsible digital citizens. So that's my book trailer, and I save it, and it will actually play in the preview, and then it'll actually play also um, when we save the whole image. So I'm going to wait for that part. Now, I also want to demonstrate to you how to put an image on top of an image because I think that's very powerful. So let me go ahead and review making the, the tag. So I'm going to click anywhere on the page, but again, I can move this. If I want that up here, I can put it there. It's probably a better place for it. So let me go down here then and show you how to add an image on top of an image. Now, when I clicked, I got the same icon that I used the last time, but I have a really nice camera that I made. 
very recently, so I'm going to use that instead because I want students to know that this is an image. I'm going to put it over here because I think it goes better on yellow. Now, the only thing I have to do is I move to the bottom of my tag editor and I just upload an image. So I'm going to click, I'm going to select my image, and it'll just show up there in a minute. And this is an image of a suitcase because it has to do with Bud Not Buddy. So again, um, I can also change. Now, this is a new feature of ThingLink where I can change what appears on the tag depending on your need or your use. So here I like that kind of particular view. And now I would go ahead and add something about the significance of the suitcase. So I might say significance here. And you can see I can use some features like I can add a heading and I can make it bold and then so that'll pop up and then I'm just going to type anything about what the significance is and just fix my tag. I can change the background color if I want and I can change the text color if I want. I like now I really don't like that bubble background color because it doesn't stand out. So I'm going to choose this one because I think that matches a little more. And you can actually pop the hex colors in here as well. So you can use something like Adobe Color Picker, find your exact color that you want, and pop the number, the letters in there. Or you can just select a picture. So ThingLink will grow with your skill level as uh, you get more comfortable using technology. And for those of you who are totally comfortable, then you'll find it's got a lot of features to meet your teaching and learning needs. Now. I just added those two tags. Here's the one tag I added, and here's how the video will play. Now what's really nice about this is students can stop it and use the pause button and take notes so that later they can write their annotation in their own words underneath below, underneath the image. Uh, here's the image that I just added, and of course, students would read the book, read the chapter, and tell what the significance is of the suitcase. Now let's take a look at the vocabulary words just a little more. Again, I just added a tag with the words, and I have the listing of more words down here on the Google Doc. So I'm kind of still building this. Here are some of the words that I would want to use. So let's see. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do with those words when they're on here. As I'm building the concept and the vocabulary words, of this chapter of But Not Buddy. So I can go ahead and edit it, and you'll see this one I've gone a little further. I linked this to a nice tool that I really like to use, a tool called Instagrock. And Instagrock is separate from ThingLink, of course. It is a tool for integrated learning and search engine tool. So we're going to pop out into Instagrock so you can see what students could do just by using that little link. And I like to add that as one way to dig deeper into vocabulary words. It's not the only tool I integrate with, but it works pretty well for this case. So here now you can see the little Instagram tag has shown on there. And when I click, I'm going to move over to Instagram where a query has already been done on, on the word contaminated. So here's how students can dig deeper. Now I was talking about interacting with content and that's why I like to do these vocabulary activities. And Instagram is well suited uh, to work along with ThingLink to help students build these definitions. Because we have some facts about contaminated, we have a, a, obviously we have a very um, interactive word web here and we can find websites about it. We can find videos about it. Again, we can find images and we can build concepts. Now, students can also take notes and they can add notes and put them on the page. So I'll just show you how to do that. And it just shows right up on the page. So here's just a way that students can concentrate on digging deeper with those vocabulary words. And then they can go back to their thing link and write their own definition. That's the whole idea here is students are constructing knowledge as they're learning. So when I figure out what contaminated really means, then I can go down here and I can write my definition and use complete sentences and make the tag better. I could even upload an image of contaminated or contaminated scene. I could link to a website that tells me more about contaminated. So that's how students can build knowledge and build information um, with a lesson like this. A teacher can actually, well, the way I use this is I kicked off this lesson and I gave it to students. Now we're going to go back here and I'll show you what I mean by giving it to students. Um, if I create this, and this is a kickoff activity and a launcher, then they have a, they'll see on uh, an image that I've created a remix button right down below here. And I apologize for not being able to show it here, but you can't remix your own images. But all students would see remix. If you go to this image, you'll see it as well. When you click on that remix button, 
you'll be prompted to log in and once you log in this image shows up in your dashboard so now you can edit it as you please and mine stays intact so what i would have with students students do is remix it and then build meaning add their video add their pictures and define the words and add video and just represent the learning and demonstrate the learning all on this one thing link so to share this i click on the share button and I've just copied the link right here. Okay, now I'm ready to add this to a Padlet wall, believe it or not. And so I'm going to go on over to the Padlet wall and we're going to add it to the wall, the Ultimate Word wall. So I've bookmarked it here and here is the live Ultimate Word wall Padlet. Okay, now this has all of these images on it and I want to add the one that I just did. So I'll demonstrate that. I need to mention to you that students do not need to be logged in. So anybody and everyone can add to this word wall if I want them to. And that's how my word wall has grown so much. So to add to the word wall, I tap anywhere on the wall and I get a new little tab here. And I go ahead and I give it a title. So that was called um, But Not Buddy. Okay, so that's all I do. And then I tap down here. And remember how I copied the link? I just paste it into the box and submit it. Now. This is really amazing. There's my image showing up. And the best part about it is all of these ThingLink images are interactive. So when I click here on any ThingLink that you see on this wall, it's going to let me interact with the content right on the page. So you'll see a box like this pops up. Here's my Bud Not Buddy that we just created in front of, as a demo, there's the video, there's the image, and the Google Doc. It all shows up here on this Padlet wall so anybody can dig deeper into the learning. And I love this because if I click View Original, I'm going to go to the original thing link on the site so I can see, um, I can add a comment to it. There's a lot of other things that you can do there. You can remix it that way. Um, that would be a great way to remix it. So this is just an amazing way to share these thing links because every single one of these is live every single one. And so we have such a collection of thing links created by all kinds of people um, who are just adding and contributing. So if you like this idea and you want to create one as an example for your students, I hope you'll add it to uh, this word wall. And I have directions for that that you'll see in just a minute. But as you can see, it couldn't be easier. Um, and then if you're looking for one to use with your students, you can probably find one here. What I really like about the word wall too is it really expands my knowledge of vocabulary because we have all kinds of teachers from all kinds all over the world who've created these their ideas of vocabulary. We have simple technology term vocabularies, the MacBook Pro vocab uh, MacBook Pro. So anybody who's teaching about MacBook Pro could certainly use this one. Uh, we have all kinds of definitions. And what I also want to show you is about the share. I mentioned this earlier, but when I click on share, I can copy the embed code here. So if I want to give this to my students, if I want to use this with my students during a lesson, I can embed it on my own blog or website. What's really nice about that is when the author changes this and updates it, I get the updated version. So you can see all kinds of vocabulary, volume, fractions, there's business marketing vocabulary I see down here. A lot of useful things. And just one example of all the content that teachers are creating already that we can use and share with each other. Well, here's the trademark law one. I like that one very much. So you can find uh, somebody who's created one of these thing links. And the teachers who did it in the teacher challenge were all encouraged to add their Twitter at the bottom. So you can also connect with them if they're teaching something that you're teaching. So this is a very powerful activity, really worthwhile for students to dig deeper into vocabulary worthwhile for teachers to create one of these lessons because it's a great way to create a thing link and worthwhile for teachers to to explore this ultimate vocabulary this ultimate word wall so before i show you another vocabulary activity i'm back to the slideshow where i want to show you more about uh, contributing to the ultimate word wall the whole article is here up in the top on the thing link blog and it's step-by-step -step directions Everybody who has created one of these did it by following the directions that I have on the blog. So it's really simple. I've got lots of tools for you. Um, let's see, if you need to learn how to create a thing link, I put that on this image as well. It's just a review of how you create that tag. And then I also, um, 
let's see, you can get to the ultimate word wall here. I wanted to show you um, some directions. Okay, so when I click on the plus sign down here, I'm coming to a different thing channel, which is just ultimate word wall directions. And let's just go through those a little bit so you can see that you've got information to create this. So you're starting with creating an original image. You could also use an image that's on the web as long as you're careful of the copyright guidelines. Definitely credit the author. Um, I always put a tag at the bottom of everything link I create and I put uh, credits to the author. So that's always a good idea too. So here's step one. They're going to use a tool to create the image and here are some great tools. And on the next page I have more tools that you can use. Um, I just like to point out that you can create your image in Google Slides. You can find an image, you can put some text on it, and then upload it to ThingLink. And I also have these five photo editing tools here that are really good for um, creating these ThingLink images as well. So you've got lots and lots of resources to create your ThingLink images for vocabulary, and you're, you can find one that works for you. And then you're going to add your image to ThingLink, and this shows you how to upload it, or if you want to use Flickr, I do recommend that you upload it. That's my preferred way, because then you're in control of the images, and you can you can change the background. You can do what, what you need to do with it. And then here are the directions for adding a ThingLink to Padlet, which I just demonstrated. Copy the link, paste it into the Padlet, type a title. So it couldn't be easier. So I want to share another example with you of a very simple but powerful activity that can be used in the classroom but can also be used in the 24-7 classroom. And I think it's something, it's a type of homework that students would enjoy doing. So that's how I use this activity. So I wanted students, to, we were studying the life cycles of a butterfly and I wanted students to understand these vocabulary words. So I actually built this image and I added the vocabulary words. As you can see, it's a little primitive. I, I believe I did it in Google Slides many, many years ago when it was a little less, uh, when it, now it has developed a little more and I can make better circles here. But anyway, so I found images of each of the stages of the life cycle of the butterfly and then I actually found video. This was an easy one to do. There's a YouTube video on each life cycle. So here's an overview. So they'd start with number one and they'd watch this video. And here's number two, and you go through the different stages. And in each of these, of course, they will understand, they will hear and see these words in context. So they'll be able to develop an understanding of these words. And then I do believe I, I yeah, I went back to Instagram here in case they wanted to do a little deeper, dig a little deeper into the learning. And then over here's a video that has the time-lapsed life cycle of a butterfly. So not only are they putting things, they're, they're taking the life cycle of a butterfly and they're taking it apart and then they're putting it all together. So this is a pretty powerful video to have at the end too. So the reason that I wanted to share this one is it was easy to create, easy to find these videos. It's a very powerful lesson and, I, and my students like doing it at home. So it was just, it's just a really great and powerful way to build a vocabulary activity with the tools that you have power it by ThingLink and just watch the learning and watch what happens in your classroom when all students learn these terms at home and then you can come back to the classroom as the flipped classroom likes to suggest and you can bring it all together and build on that learning. So that's a great way to use ThingLink for vocabulary. And you'll find this and more on the ultimate word wall. So I hope you will explore it. So all of these great features that you saw in ThingLink can work to help you build your ThingLink classroom, school, or district. And in this final part of the webinar, I want to just explain some of the things that you as teachers can do and some of the ways you can use ThingLink to manage your classroom. So the first thing to know is that um, you need to have an EDU account. And so all educators need to have something in the left-hand corner of their screen. It either says teachers, or EDU Premium. That's the free account. That's a premium account. Or it may say organization. Um, we have different types of accounts. We have accounts that are free for teachers and premium for teachers. And then we have organization accounts, which let everybody in your school district get on board quickly. And that's available in free or premium. But if you don't see one of these stickers, then you're going to need to convert to an education account. That means you signed up a while ago. And if you explore the slideshow later and you click on this button, you'll come to a video 
that walks you through exactly how to convert your account. And it's very easy to do if you watch the video, so I do encourage you to make sure you check the label in the left-hand side of your screen. Now, also speaking about tutorials, I want to mention that I do have a pretty, pretty comprehensive YouTube channel um, called Big Build Your Thing Link Classroom, and these are just a series of quick video tape, quick video tips that'll help you do some of the things that I've been showing you and exploring, like for example, how you can, you can create custom icons, how you can embed your thing link. They're very quick videos, and they should be very useful to you. Uh, okay. So let's now talk about your ThingLink classroom, school, or district. So here are some of the features that I think you'll really appreciate. Everybody can collaborate and share. So if you sign up for a ThingLink teacher account, you would get, um, you have different, the free version would allow you to have a group. So all your students are in one group. And so you can organize your classroom that way. You can see all of their work. But our premium account lets you create multiple groups. And I'm sorry, that's the way to organize your classroom. Um, you can organize them by project. You can have a few kids together in a group who are working together. You can create groups for subject areas or for each class section. But groups are a great way to help facilitate collaboration in the 24-7 classroom. And that's a feature that comes, multiple groups do come with things like premium, but everybody comes in a group. Now, Within the group, if you're a teacher, you can actually add a tag to students' work. So I can, maybe I have a group that's for my Sea Creatures project, which is what this one was, and I can go into all the students' work and log into the group and then see all the work, and I can very easily edit theirs and add a tag. So here's an example of something that I like to do to, to collaborate with students and to provide them with feedback in the 24-7 classroom. So students were asked to do a project on sea creatures, and this student wasn't getting very far, so I put my avatar icon up here. That's a premium icon I created, and then I asked Trevor a question. Uh, it says, this does look like a hammer. Trevor, do you have questions about the shark? And then the next day, Trevor clicked, and he chose an icon of his own, and he wrote down some questions about his shark. So that was a way for me to know exactly where he was at. When he came into the class, he was seven years old. And so when he came into my class, we had to discuss the questions and I had to help him do the research. But it really helped to know that he was thinking about questions and he had a question in mind. So when it was time for me to give him the help, I could. So that's a really great way to collaborate with students. These particular students doing this project only saw me for about 20 minutes a day. So they went home and they started just like, like I said, collaborating with me. And it was really fun to add feedback to their work and to watch these things grow. So that's something that anybody can do if you have the teacher account, free or premium, doesn't matter. And it's a really worthwhile use of ThingLink for sure and adding a ThingLink tag. Because when the final project is ready, you can delete all of those tags very easily. Okay, also you can create class channels. So it's a really great way to curate content is by creating a class channel. I showed you earlier that you can click on that post button in the bottom right hand corner of the controls on anything like image and add it to a channel. So students can do that and you can do that. What I like to do is I'll have a channel maybe turning in the Sea Creatures, Creatures Project work where all students, when they're done, they post it and that's how they turn it in. Uh, this here is a channel as well. This is a slideshow demonstration channel that I'm sharing. And they play really nicely and they display full screen with the premium and you can embed them in their blog or website. So it's a great way to showcase your work. Um, and you can have channels for groups as well. So if you have uh, groups for different periods, they can each have different channels. So channels are a great way to just organize and manage the workflow in your ThingLink classroom. Okay, and then there are custom icons. And custom icons, obviously, I love, and you've seen them all throughout this, this presentation. Every icon you see on this page here is, except for the YouTube one, is something that I've created myself, and they're very, very easy to create. But they really add that extra layer of differentiation to any project because you're just um, creating a little visual icon to represent the content that's on the tag. Uh, 
and they're really wonderful. It is a premium feature. I should mention with our organization account where you can get everybody up and on board quickly, you can share custom icons across the organization. So if I create an icon, I can push a button and everybody in my organization gets it. So as you can see, that's really a great way to share the learning too. You could have your school logo, you could have your avatar. In my particular stash, I have an icon of my principal because we like to put him on things. So custom icons are amazing. Now replace images. I did talk about this a while ago. I showed you the differentiation image and I also showed you the uh, Apollo 11 image which was the first image that I created. But this is what it looks like. You create, you click replace image and you can go from here to here. Just a great way to expand your um, projects and keep them current and keep using your resources so you can build these really powerful resources that you've been working on for a long time. You don't ever have to rebuild it or you don't ever have to lose it. You can just, it can grow with you as you grow. So that's a premium feature. That's a great feature as well. And then this is the remix button. That's what it looks like. And then I, we talked about remixing a minute ago, but here's a picture of it. Here's where you can remix an image. You can give students this image. They can remix it and they can build their own thing link, like the Bud Not Buddy one I showed you. Or anybody can take this image. Many people have remixed this image and added their own content to it. This is a great way to build curriculum within your organization as well because if you're, you have a few teachers working in the organization, you've taken advantage of the organization account, then you can have teachers who, uh, you know, kind of share the workload and create images for learning. Maybe you're sharing, maybe three fourth grade teachers are each creating a different science unit. Then when it comes time to share, each of those teachers can remix the one that the coworker created and add their own content. So if there's Google Docs on there, you can add a link to your own Google Doc or you could change it considerably. You can do whatever you want to do, but you can start with the workload, you know, you can start by sharing the workload and creating one image and then remixing it. Always when you remix though, do put that source crediting in the bottom that says this image was originally created by and then give your colleague or your um, member of your PLN some credit. So those are some great features for your classroom, school, and district. And I wanted to talk a little bit about premium because that's what I've been demonstrating here. If you really want the powerful features, you will need to get Thingly Premium. It's the best deal you'll, you can imagine because it's so flexible and so powerful. Our Education Premium account comes with um, one teacher gets an account for up to a thousand students. So that's meant to accommodate all of your needs if you teach different grade levels or if you teach in a high school or even at a university you would have enough with a thousand students and there you get multiple groups to organize it and everybody gets access to those premium features um, that are also displayed under these little bubbles here so if you're exploring this slideshow later and you're clicking through the buttons do make sure and take a look at to remind yourself of the premium features and then we have um, the premium account for districts and organizations so you can get that for your school you can get that for your whole district and what it does is it allows all staff and students to create collaborate and share in one place you get one account with an administrative dashboard that's really handy um, everyone in the whole organization gets access to the premium features if you purchase the premium account. But you can also start out with the free account and you can upgrade some teachers to premium, you know, your higher level teachers if you're not quite ready to commit to the full organization account. But I think organization accounts for premium is de definitely the way to go because everybody, when everybody's working together, they can share, create, and build a robust curriculum with ThingLink. So the ThingLink organization account is great. If you're a little concerned about learning how to do some of these things, don't worry. We're offering professional development all the time. I do that all the time, and um, I hope that you you will take advantage of organizations. Um, I've given organization webinars during staff development time to help teachers actually create a ThingLink. So it's a great thing for you to do for your school and district. So if you're interested in that, please contact us, support at ThingLink.com. We'd be happy to talk pricing or we'd be happy to host a smaller webinar demo where you could talk and we could show you some ways that ThingLink can be used to meet your instructional goals specifically. So we hope you will, we hope to hear from you. And so that is all for today. I wanted to thank everybody for coming to the webinar. I do have a discount code which is useful. It's Susan T L E D U. And you can just, if you choose that you want to upgrade to the um, 
thing linked single teacher premium account. You can get 20% off of that. So what was $35 is now $28 for the whole year and for all of your students. And when you type that code into the box, it'll show up here. So I don't I don't think that should be should have any problem. You can share that with your colleagues and you it's useful for a while so you can think about it. Um, also, I hope you'll contact me, Susan at thinglink.com with questions or to organize a demo and Follow me on Twitter to get some more ideas and to connect and to collaborate about ThingLink. So I thank everyone uh, for all of your time, and I thank you for attending this webinar. I hope you've got some ideas. And remember, I am encouraging everybody to create a vocabulary ThingLink and add it to the Padlet. So I hope to see yours on there. Thank you so much, and happy tagging.